Okay, good evening everybody. Okay, today we'll look at uh, evaporation, the last stage, uh, the last chapter of this particular topic. Okay, in short, evaporation. Okay, why is evaporation? Okay, evaporation is one of the observable, most of us observable phenomenon that we have, okay, whereby um, we have things evaporate, liquid evaporators, wet clothes, they become dry, I have a power of water after it disappeared or evaporated okay after some time okay after exposure to heat or after exposure to the air around it okay in this particular phenomenon okay if we talk about evaporation okay what we are looking at is is actually changes from of state for liquid to gas okay but what is different between this and boiling is that for this for evaporation it doesn't actually involve a power source Okay, there doesn't involve any uh, heat uh, heating, there's nobody heating the puddle of water. Okay, there's no external heat source. But yet, there is still a change in state accompanied. Okay, there is still a uh, phase change from liquid to gas. Okay, so in this particular section here, we look at this change of state. Okay, what actually happens and how can we actually affect evaporation or these changes. Okay, now, the most of other than uh, drying of clothes, the other one that we you mentioned here is that uh, you 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 see here is that when you, we come out from shower or we come out from swimming pool, actually you find that our wet body after that maybe after one or two minutes our body will actually become dry and we actually have this cooling sensation that we actually felt. Okay, so what actually is the reason behind it? Okay, so we will look at it in detail. Okay, what actually happens to cause that cooling effect or what actually happens when evaporation occur? Okay, so now, what actually happens? Okay, for evaporation, one thing to take note is that yes, we are looking at the change of state from liquid, okay, to gas. Okay, but unlike, like I mentioned, unlike boiling, whereby there's no power source here. Okay, there's no heating source here. The other changes that we are looking, uh, the other factor that we are concerned is that evaporation actually occur, okay, only at surface. So evaporation, okay, we are only looking at surface of the liquid only. So the area that we are concerned is only the surfaces here, okay, the surface of the liquid that we are concerned. But if you look at heating, if you look at liquid to gas change, you are looking at boiling stage. Boiling stage, if you look at heating, okay, it changes from liquid to gas. At this particular stage, we are actually looking at the entire liquid, not just the surface, but the entire liquid. Okay, the entire liquid will have a chance to become or will eventually become changes from liquid to gas when we look at boiling. But for evaporation, we are only looking at the top surface layer. Okay, that's one of the significant differences between evaporation and boiling, in fact. Okay, so if there's no heat source involved, where does the energy come from to facilitate liquid to gas changes? Remember, what we have at liquid to gas is what we call a state change. And at this particular state, you need energy okay, to break the intermolecular bonds. So what actually happens? Okay, so what actually happens here is that the energy I need or the molecule needs, okay, what the energy is for what? To overcome the intermolecular bonds. Okay. So where does it come from? Okay. The energy actually comes from the collisions from neighboring or from the top layers. So the particle at the surface here, where does it absorb the energy? Where does it where does the extra energy, where the extra boost of energy come from? It actually comes from the collisions from the neighboring particles, either above or below it. Okay, so you looking at the surface molecules, it's constantly bombarded by molecules from the air and molecules from the liquid itself at the surface okay so what happened is that the energy the more energetic particles here we are looking for they will absorb energy from these collisions okay so as a result they will have enough energy to overcome the energy to overcome the intermolecular force to be exact okay and to escape from the surfaces okay into the atmosphere okay so what we are looking at for is this actually occur where? at the top layer only. It occur at the top layer and it occur for the more energetic molecules. Okay, so the energy 
we are looking at is targeted from where coming from where from the surface and from the neighboring layers okay so they are bombarding the particles at the top layer so what we are looking at is the energetic the more energetic person the more energetic particles okay, at the top surface when they are bombarded by the air molecules they will this collision will give them extra boost of energy and what it does it will actually escape you will know, actually overcome the inner molecular bonds and after that overcome the molecular bonds after that they will escape to the surface okay so this is what happened at this uh, uh, evaporation okay so the liquid and gas layer okay the liquid and gas conversion the liquid and gas the change in state actually occur at where only at the top surface only only at the top surface layer and in particularly the more energetic uh, molecules so once they have enough energy they will leave okay and what happened and you will find that the energies or the particles that is left behind are the less energetic one and because they are less energetic they are actually having lesser kinetic energy okay so this is what happened at this particular so now at these instances here whereby the i have lesser mo energetic molecules i have a lesser kinetic energy so what does it well what happened now is at with a decrease in kinetic energy what happened is the temperature of the particle or the temperature of the molecules will actually uh, the temperature of the liquid will actually decrease okay so here students you need to be very careful here okay at this particular point in time when you look at evaporations you actually have evaporation occurring where at the top surface only so at the top surface this is what is happening only at the top surfaces so as a result of the top surfaces molecule leaving what i have is i have left behind the air uh, the molecules with less kinetic energy so the overall kinetic energy of the remaining liquid actually drops so when kinetic energy drops the temperature of this liquid of the substances will actually decrease and this is what we have okay and this is what we have what we commonly known as the cooling effect of evaporations okay because my liquid my particles at the surfaces left the temperature of the liquid actually decreases and as a result i have this cooling sensation which is why this is one of the reason why you see that evaporation doesn't occur instantaneously it occurred over time a few hours some equipment occurred uh, across the hours and hours and hours because why because the only the top layer is actually changing is actually being affected changes from liquid to gas okay the other one, the other, one other than the process the other one that i want to highlight is actually the key differences of evaporation and boiling okay it has a they are similar but they have a very distinct differences okay so students you have to make a sure that you know the distinct differences between evaporation and boiling okay so this table is our most important okay other than the fact okay the other one that you need to take note is the factors affecting evaporation it is i would say that some of the factors are actually quite common sense because among our 15 years of education or even the 15 years of life we actually see this okay so for example humidities okay the 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 more water vapor is in the air present in the air you'll find that evaporation actually occurs slower okay because it's harder to push back to gain energy from the neighboring particles okay surface area the bigger it is okay the more top surface layer is being exposed the faster is the evaporation boiling liquid boiling point of the liquid okay the lower the boiling point the faster i can evaporate at a lower temperature okay so the reverse uh so if i continue at lower boiling point so if i have a high temperature okay at the surrounding temperature evaporation will actually occur faster okay movement of air if i have more wind movement of air okay you'll find that i have more collisions occurring and where more collision i am able to gain energy from the particles push back atmospheric pressure and break the bonds and i can actually leave the surfaces okay so this is actually slightly different or opposite as compared to humidity humidity is what we have is because i have more water molecules more water molecules in the air okay yes i might have more collisions but because i have more water molecules it's actually harder for me 
to push back the atmospheric pressure. Remember, okay, for your particles, for the top layer to leave, I need to break intermolecular bonds and I must also have energy to push back the atmospheric pressure so that I can actually leave and actually uh, evaporate. Okay, so to do that, I need two energy for two action. Okay, break intermolecular bonds, push back atmospheric pressure. And because of that, you find that with more humidity, the water molecule, the water pressure, the atmospheric pressure at the surrounding air is actually slightly higher. So that's why evaporation is actually harder when we talk about when you have high humidity in the air. The other two factors we have is pressure. Okay, so it's similar to humidity and followed by temperature. Same thing, the higher the temperature, the more energetic I have for the surrounding air molecules, the bigger is the collision, the more powerful is the collision, the more energy has been transferred. Okay, so these are the factors that students you have to be familiar with. Okay, same thing, the application of evaporation, actually, if you look at the evaporation effects of eva or application of evaporation, it actually only have one effect. Okay, and that effect that we are looking out for has many applications and that effect we are interested in, in interested in is actually the cooling effect of evaporation okay and we make you or make use of this effect in our in a lot of applications for example our most distinct way of cooling our body down you will be pers uh, perspiration okay when you sweat you sweat out you'll find that you when you sweat what it does your body is actually trying to sweat it out to cool your body because when your sweat evaporates you have what we call a cooling sensation i will be able to take away the energy the kinetic energy from the body and leaving the body with at a lower kinetic energy or aka lower temperature or what we call cooling effect okay and this is the same when i when i sponge wash when i water bath the uh patient with high fever or high temperature the evaporation of the water actually has a cooling effect to lower the temperature Okay, and similarly, refrigerator. Okay, in even air conditioning. Okay, the coolant. Okay, the evaporation of the evaporation of coolant. Okay, allows cooling effect, and I actually cool down the machine itself. Okay. Uh, same thing. Even uh, perfume. Okay, I have a perfume. I spray perfume on my body. I have a cooling sensation, and even I have alcohol swab. Okay, I, I use alcohol swab. Okay, to uh, to sanitize uh to sanitize my my skin before injection that alcohol swab you swab i have a cooling sensation why because alcohol has a low boiling point which means it ev evaporates easily and because of that i have this cooling effect that are happening so how does evaporation occur same thing the same three steps that you see in front okay this three process for alcohol for any object that evaporates we occur at we use this same three stages okay the top layer and the energy and more ed energetic particles here okay so please take note of the process of how evaporation occur not just for water but even for uh, alcohol and other substances okay for to be exact actually all evaporation actually have the same processes okay with this okay this will mark the end of chapter 9 okay thermal property of matter i do hope this is uh, we will we we'll give this will serve as a guide or a brief summary for this particular topic. Okay, students, you still need to read up your notes or your textbook to get uh, maybe a better understanding. The video will serve as a guide, okay, or a summary for what is happening at this particular topic. Okay, so same before, plan your time, okay, revise or study or wisely, okay, and study consistently. Okay, see you.